now that we have some idea of what happens um, to drag as a result of 3D effects, let's look at estimating what happens to the lift and drag of a whole airplane when we consider them in three dimensions. This is from section 6.7 of the textbook. So in this course, since it's about aerodynamics, usually the 3D objects that we care about are entire airplanes rather than spheres or even just a wing. So regarding lift, the question is, how does the fuselage affect the lift? And let's say we have top-down view of an aircraft. Basically, part of the wing is missing because it's buried inside the fuselage or it's sort of sitting right on top of the fuselage. But empirically, It's been observed that in general, the lift of the wing plus fuselage combination is basically equal to the lift you would get from the wing without the fuselage. So the lift of this is the same basically as the lift of this uninterrupted wing. Now, that's great, it's a very helpful result and it makes our lives easier, but it's not quite so simple when it comes to drag. There's an effect called interference drag which causes the drag, like something of a wing-fuselage combination, to generally be higher than the sum of the drags of the components. So basically the interactions hurt you when it comes to drag. So to try to account for this, we're going to use uh, an extension of the equation that we had earlier for drag of a finite wing, right? So for a wing, we had the drag coefficient was the profile drag coefficient plus the induced drag coefficient, which we could write in terms of the lift aspect ratio and span efficiency factor. And we're going to try to expand this to represent what's going on for a complete airplane. So this is the total drag, again, for the finite wing. This is the viscous um, drag coefficient due to skin friction and flow se uh, separation. And this is the induced drag coefficient. Now, if we, write, if we want to rewrite this for a whole airplane, we could write that CD is CD E plus CL squared over pi E A R. And now this drag coefficient is the total drag coefficient for the airplane. And this CDE is a parasite drag or parasitic drag coefficient for the whole airplane. And then we still have our induced drag term from the wing. So from our 2D discussion of airfoils and how we know that bodies behave, um, we can say that this parasite drag is going to be some kind of function of angle of attack. But we also know that the lift coefficient 
is a function of the angle of attack. So that means that there's a way to implicitly write that this parasite drag coefficient of the whole airplane is some function of the lift coefficient. And we can approximate that relationship this way. Where here, r is some empirical constant. CD, D is our parasite drag coefficient for the whole aircraft. And since at, to try to interpret what this term means, since if we have zero lift, the lift coefficient is zero, then that means that CD naught is the drag coefficient at zero lift. So the drag coefficient for the whole airplane is the drag coefficient at zero lift plus this r factor plus 1 over pi e a r times c l squared. Putting this back into the original equation. Now, it is a sad and unfortunate truth uh, that there are two definitions of lowercase little letter e in aerodynamics. What we had before was the span efficiency factor. Which was one over one plus delta, right? Now we have a new E. It's called the Oswald effic uh, efficiency factor. In my notes and course handouts, etc., I'm going to use E sub O. But in for the Oswald efficiency factor, but in the text you'll find just E used as well. And you need to be aware of this as you'll find this everywhere in the literature. E will be used interchangeably in these two ways, and usually you have to determine it uh, which one's being talked about based on context. So often you'll see this Oswald efficiency factor talked about for an aircraft configuration more commonly than the span efficiency factor just of a wing. But to formally define the difference between the two, EO is E over R pi E A R plus 1. And if we use that definition and put that into the previous equation, then what we get is that the drag coefficient for the total aircraft is the zero lift drag coefficient plus CL squared over pi EO AR. So it looks a lot like the total drag coefficient for a wing, except that we have CD at the drag coefficient at zero lift here instead of the parasite drag coefficient. And we have the Oswald efficiency factor instead of the span efficiency factor here. So this second term includes both induced drag and parasitic drag that's due to lift. Another way you can kind of tell these numbers apart, the two E's, is by their values. So E sub O is usually something like about 0.7 to 0.85, 
and this applies to the entire aircraft, remember, whereas the span efficiency factor is usually like point not between 0.9 and 1, and that applies to the wing. Aircraft versus wing. Now, there's an empirical expression for the Oswald efficiency factor, which is useful as a, a first pass at it. 1.78, 1 minus 0 0.045 times the aspect ratio to the power of 0 0.68 minus 0 0.64. So you can see that this is a completely empirical expression that has no basis on, on any physics. Um, but based on experience, this is probably a, a good place to start for estimating the efficiency factor. So then all you have to know is the drag coefficient at zero lift and the aspect ratio to get your drag coefficient as a function of lift coefficient. So this was AR and CD naught lets you write CD is a function of CL. So this is really the basis for conceptual aircraft design and for predicting performance. So then if you look at the aircraft lift to drag ratio, since CL is a function of alpha and CD is a function of alpha, the ratio must also be some function of angle of attack for a given Mach number, Reynolds number in geometry, of course. And since the lift coefficient is proportional approximately to alpha, at least over uh, the linear region, and CD is basically in our model proportional to CL squared, then we would expect there to be an angle of attack for which CL over CD is maximum. So, fairly obvious reasons. This is a quantity that's of great interest in aerodynamic design, um, and we can calculate it from our other known aerodynamic properties. So if we start with CL over CD, and write this out in full as being CL is CD naught plus CL squared over pi EO AR. Then if we take the derivative, P CL over CD with respect to CL and set that equal to zero, we get CD naught plus CL squared over pi EO AR minus CL 2CL over pi EO AR over CD O plus CL squared over pi EO AR all squared. And I'll save you the trouble if you actually solve that equation. What you get is that CD naught is CL squared over pi EO AR. So what does this tell us? This tells us that at whatever angle of attack it is, where the lift to drag ratio is maximum, the zero lift drag and the drag due to lift are equal. So if we solve for CL at that condition, we get that CL is square root of pi EO AR CD naught and put that into the original equation, substitute that in, then we get that CL over CD max is pi EO AR C 
CD naught over one half over CD naught plus pi e o a r CD naught over pi e o a r and if we simplify cancel out terms that are Redundant, we get CL over CD max is pi EO AR CD naught to the one half over two CD naught. This is a really remarkable and powerful result. So what this is saying is that under the, the, the simplifying assumptions we've made, which are, are generally applicable to most conventional aircraft, CL over CD max depends only on the zero lift drag coefficient, the Oswald efficiency factor, and the aspect ratio. Now, the hard part is still figuring out what the zero lift drag coefficient and what the Oswald efficiency factor are, but we've really simplified the problem from having a three-dimensional problem where we have almost an infinite number of things that we don't know to having something that we're always going to know, the aspect ratio, and then two other quantities to determine to figure out what the uh, maximum lift-to-drag ratio for our aircraft is likely going to be. This is actually makes the problem tractable, um, and since we have an empirical expression for E0 that uh, only depends on the aspect ratio, it really comes down to just finding what the zero lift drag is, which can be done um, using various types of typically numerical analysis.